Hello, and welcome back to Marathon, everybody. Now I'm going to be doing a little bit, better, a little bit of a better job in uh, explaining things. I think that last um, part I sort of didn't explain some things correctly, um, and it wasn't my intention to mislead you in any way. But um, getting that out of the way, um, so there, this level. Um, we're going to be getting new weapons, essentially. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, let's get rid of these guys. Um, and then there will be a terminal right here. I am now in contact with a number of colonists planet side, but their reports on the situation below are conflicting and obviously exaggerated. The primary medium rainbow antenna has been disabled or destroyed, which makes communication extremely difficult. The only thing which seems clear is that the spaceport was obliterated by low-yield nuclear weapons minutes after the attack on the marathon began. This I can verify through my own optical instruments. The invaders seem to be more interested in the marathon than the colony, at least in the short term. The motives behind their unprovoked attack are still unknown, however. This is the computer terminal you are using now. I cannot teleport you out of this section from here so you will have to leave from another terminal after you find the assault rifle. There is an M75 assault rifle slash grenade launcher and ammunition at this location. When firing on the fully automatic setting this weapon is highly inaccurate, but the grenades hit hard and it's the best we can do right now. Ammunition may be scarce for a while, so be prepared to fall back to your pistol. Here is the terminal you must reach to leave this section. Alien infiltration of this area is high. Proceed with caution. You may find doors blocked or stairways retracted on the way, because the AI in control of these functions is damaged and behaving erratically. Okay, so... For the most part in Marathon 1, you don't have to pay too much attention to what's actually what you actually need to do. Um, generally speaking, you can play through the levels and not have too much of a hard time if you're just going to essentially um, go off and ignore everything. And it's not until later that you'll you know, not be able to do that. Um, you really cannot, you cannot do that. You will not get through the game. But, um, well, yeah, and they can kill each other. Uh, I think I failed to mention that. So, here's our assault rifle. Um, it has a noob tube on the front of it. I don't know why that's a thing, but um, there's a noob tube on this, as you can see. Here's another health terminal if you need it. Uh, I don't need it. Um, oh, hi. Um, I'm gonna save the assault rifle. I, don't, I it was like inside me for a second. So, <coughs> let's go back over there. So there's, let's just continue on here, and so there's sort of this corridor right here. Um, I'm gonna try to explain a little bit how to get to things. Um, you can rocket jump in this game. That's a very important sort of idea. Um, in Marathon. You know what I mean? It's not as important as it is in plenty of other games, but it is very important if you want to get some of the secrets. So, rocket jumping is kind of uh, an important idea to try to do. I don't think I'll be able to get up there. I don't think there's really any, I don't think there's actually anything up there. But, um... I'll take a look over at this right here let's see um, you could sort of there we go you could sort of climb if you saw essentially if you're shooting well how long um almost died there I didn't expect those guys to be there like that um, so you can sort of climb almost it's like you hover in midair kind of a little bit when um you're shooting so, essentially, you can do that to kind of rocket jump onto things. And I didn't know that those guys were going to be invisible, the uh, compilers. 
Okay, so now... Let's head up over here. And... And now we have the staircase that's going up. So we can head over there. So we're heading back the way we came. Oh, Jeez, yeah. The gravity in this... So there isn't actually any jumping in this, but you sort of slide around. And since there's very little gravity, you can sort of, like, uh, move really... You can control yourself in mid-air, too. You know, so if you want to be like Leafy and fly around in 30 circles all day, then you can do that in Marathon. I don't know why you do that. I mean, that's horrible fucking gameplay, but... Anyways, you can do that, so... It's not like it's hard. But... Yeah, okay. So there's more guys down here. Um, let me just use my pistol. The blue guys are again high level. And here is another little place you can rock and jump to. Um, uh, it doesn't... Well, I just hurt myself, so I can't. <laughs> but, um... Oh boy. I'll go over there in a second. If I can help the terminal. <coughs> Those things actually don't do anything, though. The, um... These things, they don't actually do anything. They actually give you, like, this thermal vision, but it doesn't actually do anything. So, it doesn't give you damage, it just sort of outlines the enemies of red. So if you really want it, you can get it. It's, it's not gonna help you very much. So, mostly this one is just for getting extra weapons. And then the next level, I believe, is when we'll be introduced to do an idea. Um, and I'll explain in detail more on that idea. Alright. Ah, oh, fuck you. I think if that guy does hit me, he'd probably kill me. So. I'm gonna need to get health real soon over here. I never trust the areas. I just like. Okay, so. Alright, so we're, we're almost done with this level, actually. Okay. Doing this, like, really slowly. Okay. I'm running. <sighs> Fuck that. Okay, so let's not do that. When you are in the thermal, the uh, compilers do not show up on the thermal. Like, it doesn't show them as a heat entity. Um, and that's because they are, in fact, not exactly... Um, organic. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, and I think I probably explained this in the last video, but I probably censored it out like I do many things, and I might even say this. So I wouldn't really that I can... Oh, my God. I wouldn't hold too much faith that uh, you'll actually hear what I said. Alright. No, we, re we really have to be careful over here. Alright, so let's get, get out of here. No, 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 no. God 
Damn it. Alright. Oh, hello. You really, they really have weird vision in this game. They kind of like, sometimes they just sort of stand there. Alright, so, now let's push this button, um, so I don't get that going. Here's another terminal. Unauthorized access alarm 2521. Security reach 2362D12.53.2117.42. Marathon internal engineering documents section 1C appendix H. Subject, doors. By Estasia Orists, Dominic I. Placar, a nurse symbol date. 2402.03.23.16.42. There are five basic door designs to be used on the marathon. 1. Outer vault head doors. 2. Airlock doors. 3. Inner vault head doors. 4. Tertiary or inner sealed non vacuum safe doors. 5. Quaternary or inner powered automatic opening doors. Direct control of all doors except the tertiary and quaternary doors will be given to Durandal with indirect control of all other doors going to Durandal. The difference between direct and indirect control primarily has to do with the manner of opening the doors. Durandal will only open a directly controlled door when he is specifically asked to do so. Indirectly controlled doors are automatically controlled by Durandal to open when needed. However, due to the expense involved with adding thermal and visual spectrum sensors to the tertiary and quaternary door groups, these doors will be minimally used. The expected savings of not using this extra sensory input is estimated to be 57% of the base cost of the basic inner vault head door. The types of doors are all basically the same, with some slight variations. The doors in classes 1 and 3 are the same doors, classified separately to distinguish between the level of safety checking required to assure acceptable leakage. The airlock doors are specifically modified to work with manual and remote activation switches. Airlocks are all to be marked with a specific airlock symbol and to be outfitted with an air recharge system. The tertiary and quaternary doors are designed exactly as the bulkhead doors, but are checked coarsely for air leakage. This article as well as articles 530F and 532G on windows and elevators respectively will be placed for public access in the Marathon Internal Engineering Documents Section 1C Appendix H. Spurious interrupt breach disabled. Further access denied. Alert. Security breach at Terminal 2362D 12.53.2111.42. Okay, so it is sort of important to understand that uh, Durandal originally was in control of doors, essentially. That was what this <coughs> AI was doing. It was in charge of doors. Um, and now, uh, he's gone crazy because he was damaged. There are, a, there are actually three AIs aboard the Marathon. There's... Leela, there's Durandal, and then there's another one which we haven't been introduced to yet. Um, however, you should know that there are three, because it's technically mentioned, I believe, uh, in one of the older terminals, that there are in fact three AIs on here. So this is the last terminal over here, and we'll go ahead and just read this. The Marathon's automated defenses were disabled during the initial attack by a directed magnetic pole. The aliens used the same weapon to disable the Marathon's other two AI, Durandal and Taikawu, and to severely damage myself. Durandal is responsible for controlling the ship's autonomous functions, doors, life support, kitchens, air reprocessors, stairs, and so on. Because he is non-functional, I am working to assume as many of these tasks as possible. Taikawu controls the science and engineering network. Now that you are better armed, our first priority is to reactivate the Marathon's defenses, under my control, so that we may offer some resistance to the aliens. I have built three replacement circuit boards for the defense system, but cannot move them from the manufacturing center without assistance. I will now transport you to retrieve the replacement parts, and will give you further instructions when you arrive. Alright, <clears throat> and by the way, if you want to get out of terminals before essentially teleporting because 
button. If you hit enter, it'll just teleport you. If you hit the action button. Uh, so, if you want to not do that, you can hit escape and it'll back you out of the things. I don't think I explained that in the last video. I didn't explain a lot of things that I really should have, as well as the map, which just is M. And, you know, the map actually, this holographic thing, I sort of started to say it, but I think I got cut off that this holographic map is only for the Alpha 1 version of the game. And it's not actually for um, the original Marathon. The original Marathon has a map, but it fills the whole screen. Like, it wouldn't show this holographic thing. And it's actually kind of cool because actually if you look at the map, your character lines up with the center of the screen. So you can use that as a reference of what you're shooting at, sort of, if you want to just run around the entire place with the map open. But anyways, so we'll be teleporting here and I'll be seeing you in the next video.